How's your quarantine treating you? What have you done with all your time? That intro wasn't a guilt trip, just the best intro I could think of to get you thinking about how you've spent the last few weeks. For me, I'm starting week six of working from home. You know what's crazy? I always thought that with just a little bit more time in my home office, I could get so much more work done. But guess what? It hasn't panned out how I wanted. So today we're going to talk about the creativity killer, apathy. Before I get down that talk track, I wanted to blend some announcements into this episode. First, as you may have heard in the welcome back episode, I've been working hard on a curriculum for UX designers struggling to find work or wanting to make a change that has proven more timely now as many have lost their jobs and freelance is starting to dry up. What we are facing today won't go on forever. There will be a return to normalization at some point and hopefully sooner than later. When that does happen, many UX designers are going to be finding themselves competing for the same jobs. My hope is that this curriculum will help those get an edge and find that dream job. The good news, the curriculum is underway, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But first, I wanted to thank those who've wandered over to the Design Today Patreon page and have made a donation. Most recently, I wanted to thank Mike Curtis for his support. Mike's a good friend of mine. Uh, and has a great written series on Medium called The UX of You. It's fantastic content, and he's an even better dude. If you're on the Slack group, make sure you reach out to Mike uh, and make friends with him. Everyone needs a Mike Curtis in their life. Now, with that said, if you'd like to join the Slack group or become a patron to help support the show, head over to designtoday.com to find all that info. Now, apathy. The first thing I recognized in my work habits upon coming home to work remote was that things weren't your average work remote conditions. For myself, I spent the first couple weeks plagued with fear that I'd get in my head from the news and media. With that fear, everything else I could possibly work on seemed so meaningless. I've mentioned that before a couple weeks back in an episode. I thought, why start a podcast when there's so much more important things going on in the world? People are losing jobs. People are struggling with health and basic accommodations like food. We had healthcare workers on the brink of sanity, and I want to start up a podcast about UX design? It didn't add up. Apathy set in, and I sat complacent. A couple weeks went by. I turned off the news, but still found myself preoccupied with other things going on in life. When you're home all day and have a wife and three kids, you can't help but observe all the other things that I could be doing with my time. But after a long day of work, And since coming home, the days have definitely been longer. I didn't want to do anything but veg out and binge watch a show. I recognize these poor habits, and I always made plans to overcome them the next day. I'm going to wake up early, eat a healthy breakfast, work out, meditate, and start cranking on that to-do list. But sure enough, things always came off the rails early in the day, and I couldn't find a way to get back on track. If I've described something similar to what you've been experiencing, Then here's the first thing I want to say. You're not alone. I'm sure hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world are feeling the same way. These are new territories that nobody is prepared for. Second, those feelings can be categorized under the umbrella of apathy, the general lack of enthusiasm, interest, or concern. So what do you do about it? I went back to something I used to practice pretty consistently. It's called the rule of three. You can learn more about it in a past episode, and I'll throw that show in the description. Every day, I started creating three daily goals that led to three weekly goals. Those three weekly goals supported my three big yearly goals. In taking those baby steps, I got traction. Now about that curriculum. In one of the courses I'm working on for a career prep, part of the course is going to be a design challenge. Knowing how crucial this step is in the course, I wanted to test run that portion with the guinea pig group. I posted something on LinkedIn and I've had over 3,500 eyes on it. I selected a dozen or so designers, invited them to a kickoff meeting to give them more details. And wouldn't you know it, all dozen designers said they were interested in joining that guinea pig project. That project is getting underway this week and I'll be back later on to give an update on how things are going. But what really happened for me that night uh, of the kickoff meeting was something I didn't expect. 
the apathy dissipated. After the meeting was over, I went and told my wife how jazzed up I was about the movement. I felt back in the groove. I felt the engine was moving with a full head of steam. I felt for the first time since quarantine, excited about the side hustle again. And I looked forward to the next day to continue working on it. Now, what can you learn from this? How can you overcome apathy? Take the baby steps in the right direction. Discover and practice the rule of three. Have those baby steps take you in the direction of something that does excite you or even something that excited you in the past. Don't let your train come to a slow halt. It's so much harder to get moving when you're at a dead stop. Keep traction moving forward and slowly pick up speed. So instead of thinking, how can you accomplish all those big goals today? Break it down into a few smaller tasks. Then begin to tackle those smaller tasks one at a time. You'll be back to the grind before you know it. And you'll really be taking advantage of this awkward time we're all living in. Don't sit on your laurels. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Get after it. We're so in this together. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. We'll see you next week.